Texas, starring Beverly McKenzie. all over the hospital for you, Courtney. It's ironic to find you here in my own backyard. Congratulations. Something like this takes planning. Your timing's perfect. Bart, wait. Look, I'm as surprised as you are. We didn't know this was going to happen. I live here, remember? Do you think I wouldn't come back? I didn't think it would matter. I brought Kevin by to use the pool. That's all. Well, it hasn't cooled you off. Here. Take my keys. Use my car. Use my apartment. Why don't you use my bed? Oh, come on, Bart. That's not necessary. Stay out of this, Kevin. Why did you lie to me, Courtney? I did. Why did you say you were going to do research? Or is this it? Am I the subject? Am I the white rat? Run me through a maze until I drop? It wasn't a lie. Not at the time. How long do I have before everything you've said turns into a lie? It's my fault, Bart. I take full responsibility. You, that's a laugh. You're the most irresponsible man I've ever met. Stop it. I keep promises when I make them, Kevin. Can you say that to Rena? Stop it! All right. We've both seen this coming for some time now. So why don't you just say what you have to say and let's get it over and done with once and for all. Would you talk to Alex for me? Perhaps if he hears my reservations from you. Couldn't have found a more unlikely go between if you tried. Oh, I shouldn't see Alex. If I do, how can I help but plead my case and misrepresent hers? You know, Daddy, I've been trying to remember the last time I, I had such a good time, and you know what? What? I can't remember. Oh, I can see where my little girl's been starved for a good time. Daddy, you don't know how much. I love the way Houston moves. I always have. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody calls you up and says, Oh, how about going to Galveston this afternoon, or or how about Aspen tomorrow? You want to dance? You want to water ski? You want to fly to Brazil? <laughs> oh, that's how I felt this afternoon. It's been too long. Well, I don't know if I can offer you a flight to Rio, but I think we could manage to get ourselves a couple of drinks without too much trouble. Well, toast the marshals and their triumphs. <laughs> oh, Daddy, what a day. Hmm? I, uh, I had the feeling that, uh, Ryan Connor enjoyed himself, too. Daddy, that hat was an inspiration. You know, he really did look like he belonged in one, didn't he? <laughs> he did me ever? <laughs> you know, I think that we have got ourselves a junior Alex Wheeler for this little town. I just wonder if Houston can handle another one. Oh, sure. After all, it's gonna handle me. I'll make you a little bet, Daddy. Huh. Ryan is smart and hard-nosed, and smart people who come to Houston, well, you are lucky. Hello, enough. honey. You're home early, aren't you? Well, I went by Rena's and found she was out. I wanted to talk to her. 
Oh, was I out. It was wonderful. Speed, action, Justin right in the saddle where he belongs, and the whole Marshall tribe together fighting for what they want. That's what you have to do to get what you want, isn't it, Vicky? A horse show? Some like them, some don't. Daddy and I do. It was just like it used to be. <laughs> the marshals riding and winning. Ginny was better than ever. The most gorgeous horses in the whole world. All of Texas laid out there just for you to ride on. It's my world, Vicky. The only world I've ever cared about. I even loved it when I was a tiny girl, but then, of course, you wouldn't remember that, would you? And I still love it more than ever. <laughs> well, I'm glad you both enjoyed yourselves, since your visit is almost over. Well, here we are, ladies. Something to calm the nerves. Daddy, when can we go back to the Marshall Ranch to pick me out a horse? Well, honey... You're uh, buying a horse? That's right. That seems an odd thing to do. You think so? Uh, can you really keep a horse in Bay City? After all, you only have a hotel suite. No, I'll be keeping it at the Marshall Ranch. Oh. Well, then you won't get to ride it very often, will you? Oh, only about two or three times a week, Mommy. Rena, what are you talking about? Does that confuse you? Oh, well, it doesn't have to, honey. You just think about it this way. I'm back from exile. And I'm going to pick up my life where I dropped it off before I went away like a fool. I suppose you talked this over with Kevin. No, but I expect that he's picked up something in the air. Something like, I'm not going to be dragged or pushed out of Houston. Not now. This is totally irresponsible, and you know Oh, it. well, of course it is, honey. I mean, that's the way you would look at it. But just who am I supposed to be responsible to? I mean, I've been away from here for months. I've missed my daddy. I've missed my friends. I've missed the weather that I'm used to, and I, I miss Texas. And for what? So Kevin can wrap that darn clinic around him like a, a coat of arms and do his professional thing? Well, that's not my thing. I'm, I'm not responsible for his life. I'm only responsible for my life. Rena, please back off. I am not going to back off, Daddy. I mean, this has been building up for months now. I mean, haven't you heard slavery was out? It's against the law, even if you do call it marriage. Oh, stupid. Stupid. Stupid to love my father, to want to be in my own home, to want to be with people that I care about and who care about me. Oh, yes, Mother, I can, I can understand how you might think that is stupid, considering your track record. Now, that will do, Rena. Do you hear me? Are you going to take up for her after she left us for all those years, huh? Girl, you hush your mouth. Now, this is your mother. I don't care what has passed between the three of us, good or bad. I will not have you talking to her let like that. Let it go, honey, let it go. She's not my little girl. She's not a little girl at all. That's right. I'm not a girl, and I'm not a blushing bride either. I'm all grown. And the life I make, Mother, is going to be my own. And you don't care if Kevin wants this new life of yours? You know, he's entitled to a life that he wants, too, or is that beyond your comprehension? Oh, uh, what about what Kevin wants? What about his life? Frankly, madam, I don't give a damn. Oh, no, Court, I'm not going to let you do that. Do what? Play the noble innocent. Just begging to be persecuted. It's too easy. Not much about this is easy, Bart. No. Seems like a pretty enviable position to me. The desired one. Kevin wants you. I want you. And you, what do you want? Do you even know? Well? Kevin. I guess that leaves me odd man out, doesn't it? Is there a consolation prize? Just honesty. 
Thanks. I think we've tried that one before. You have. I haven't. Does that mean this isn't the first time the two of you have been together? No. It means I've wanted it to happen for a long time. So all that hero worship, that professional respect for Dr. Kevin Cook, mender of hearts and married man, it was all a lie. Yes. I never wanted to hurt you, Bart, never. But I lied to you, and I lied to myself. That night we talked, when I thought Kevin was back in Bay City. I told myself that you were right. It was just a crush. A fantasy for little girls. The big, strong man who knows everything. I wanted to let go of it, just like you said. I wanted to settle back into the life I had always had. Always expected. That's me. The expected, always there. Yes, you were part of it. But the rest of it isn't there. If I look back now, Bart, what's left for me to claim, hmm? The career I'd always planned in surgery? The house in River Oaks? The father who always paid my way before I could even ask? Uh-uh. Oh, no. Bart, if there's one thing that I have learned, it's that nothing stays the same. That day I saw Kevin, I asked him here with me. I just wanted something to hold on to after he was gone. One afternoon, just a couple of hours. I knew it couldn't last. But the memory could. Oh, Court, I think you're out of control. What is that supposed it to mean? It sounds as if you... As if you think that all the things you've lost give you a right to take whatever you want to replace them and damn the consequences. No, I don't believe that. What about my cousin Rena? Doesn't it bother you that Kevin's married? Yes. But not half as much as it bothers him. I can't believe you're the same girl I used to tease about her high-minded principles. Bart, a person can't always live by their principles. Not what really. What else is there to live by? Feelings, dreams, I don't know. But I do know that a person can get so trapped inside the principles that they can't find room to breathe. I know what I'm doing, Bart. I'm in love with Kevin Cook, and I'll take the consequences. Do you even know what the consequences may be? It doesn't matter. Rena can be a formidable opponent. And I'll stay out of her way. Are you prepared to have to sneak out and meet Kevin in odd corners of town? To lie to everyone you know? To see him in public and have to turn your face away? Are you prepared to watch him climb on a plane and fly home with his wife when he's through with you? I'm prepared. For anything. You didn't throw away my love. It has to be this way, Bart. Don't you understand? No, I don't. And I'm not going to let it happen. I'm not asking you for permission. Courtney. Just leave me alone, Bart. Just leave me alone. Oh, Stryker. Stryker, I'm afraid you've really done it this time. Done what? What did I do? Vicky, you should have seen her at that horse show. She was like a whole different girl, happy and laughing, and, and that little mean streak of hers was completely disappeared. Vicky, it's just a horse. All I said was I was going to buy the fool thing. You know I've never been able to pass up a chance to buy things from a girl. I know. Oh, how I know. You even tried to buy her a husband. And now you're buying an excuse for her to get rid of him. Oh, Stryker. 
Don't you see? She's got to learn to get on by herself. She can't keep running to Daddy to make everything right again. What happens when Daddy's not there? But she'll never let go of you, unless you let go of her first. Hello, darling. How's every little thing? Hmm? Why am I off the wagon again? You tell me you're finally learning how to relax. Six, two of those, whatever they are. What's the matter, Rena? You have a rough day at the horse show? Not at all. I had a glorious time. It was a gorgeous day, too. Not a cloud in the sky. It was bone dry and sunny. Yes, it was a lovely afternoon. Saw people there I haven't seen in a, in a dog's age. Everyone wants them to come out of the woodwork, see the marshal's new stock. Oh, and Jenny got the big prize. Can you imagine? Best of the show. Kate Marshall's face lit up like a chandelier. Oh, and guess what, honey? Stryker promised that he'd ask her to let me pick out a horse just like I had when I was a little girl. Isn't that wonderful? What? I said, isn't that nice that Stryker's going to buy me a horse? Rena, what are you chattering about? A horse, darling. What are you going to do with a horse? Ride it. Where? Anywhere I please. Well, it's a little unrealistic, isn't it? Where would we keep a horse in Bay City? We don't even have a guest room. Well, obviously we can't. Good. Then that's settled. Not the way you think, Kevin. I am not going back to Bay City. Now, I've given this a lot of thought, honey, but this past week has made up my mind. I can't live there anymore, and you can't ask me to go. Houston is my home, Kevin. It's where I live. It's, it's where I'm alive. Now, I I'm sorry if you don't understand this, honey, but, but I'm where I belong, and I'm staying. Levitt? Yes, that's it. And you don't care where I go, huh? Well, of course I do. You're staying right here with me. Oh, really? Why? Because you're my husband. Oh, I see. Is this what you consider to be your wifely duties, Rena? You decide where we're going to stay, and then uh, they stay, and then all of a sudden you make an announcement? Is that... You decided Bay City last time. I'm just having my turn. Rena, this is not a game where we take turns at bat. This is a marriage. As unlikely as that may seem. A marriage? Unlikely, yes. That word ought to stick in your throat, darling. Believe you me, it does. Kevin, I have tried everything I know to make you happy. But you don't like things that normal people like. Parties? Oh, no, you'd rather go to sleep. Nice dinners, being out with friends? Oh, no, you'd rather stare at some article about electrocardio cardio junk or something. And sex? Well, that's out of the question lately. I mean, the mere thought of it seems to drive you through the floor. The only thing that seems to work is, is me shutting my mouth and letting you stare soulfully at another woman's eyes. Even Pat Randolph, no live wire herself, mind you. Even she got tired of it. Now, just what does it take? It takes a certain comprehension that life is not a string of social engagements. It takes a certain seriousness with regard to work, the world, and the people in it. It takes respect, independence, and trust. And a lot of other things, Rena, you'll never have. Never. Yes. Yes, that doesn't surprise me. So, there's no point in my beating my head against the wall, is there? I'm staying right here, Kevin, where I can have some company and a, and a few things to do since you won't give me any of your time. And I don't care if you leave or stay or what. Now, Stryker will still set up that surgical training program for you. You'd enjoy heading that up if you ever enjoy anything. So that is your ticket to marital bliss, is it? Stryker gets you a horse and me a training program. Well, darling, I do not intend to lead my life that way. You don't. 
or work for you before. Stryker bought you the only life you ever had, and he paid top dollar for that. I know that as a matter of fact. Now, I don't know how much money he sunk into your, your programs or your clinic or, or whatever, and I'm not going to ask him. But I'll bet you one thing, honey. It was enough to buy me some special consideration. So we're down to that, are we? Toe the line for Rena, otherwise the clinic goes busted. Well, thank you. You just made the decision very easy. Where are you going? Wherever you're not. You're going to be awfully sorry if you don't think about this. I'm going to have, Rena. For a long time, you've been running a tab up here in my head. And that credit, money, Stryker's money, has bought you. Well, baby, your account just ran dry. of the summer? Now, Max, listen to Aunt oh. Maggie, please. No! No, this is no time to be taking a vacation. Kate needs us now to get the ranch going. Oh, honey, Kate doesn't need these two little hands. I'll just go ask her. Oh, never mind, Kate. Uh, Ricky and I need her. Who's gonna cook and keep house? It's about time you two big lugs learned how to do something for yourself. You know how to open a can of beans, don't you? Well, Max, I'll show you before I leave. Wait, 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 wait one oh, minute now. now. listen, and other times you go right down to Kate's and eat. She always cooks enough for an army anyhow. Yeah, and Max is for the cleaning. Well, you could just leave everything right where it is, and I'll fix it when I get back. And town is going to be such a treat for Elena. Oh, and Max, Aunt Maggie wouldn't ever let me do anything wild or do anything foolish. Oh, please, Max. Ricky? When's your day off this week? Wednesday. Uh, I am, I'm sorry, Maggie. I, I can't let Elena come. Until Wednesday. <laughs> Ricky will pick her up. Max, I promise. I'll take good care of her. You, you better. Sorry. I want you to watch her with a closed eye. Oh, I'll keep it. Good luck, Elena. Let me get that for you. Oh, oh boy. Oh, I thought I was going to fall over backwards. I'll just put it anyways. Oh, thanks, Ricky. How'd you know my name? Well, it's not like we haven't met before. Have we? Well, I guess we haven't. But Maggie has told me everything about you. Everything? Mm-hmm. <laughs> did she tell you that I race stock cars in my spare time? Yep. Well, did she ask if you'd like to come watch a race? Well, Maggie wouldn't ask me a thing like that. She knows I hate cars. You hate cars? Oh, well, not yours, please. But yeah, every car I've ever known, which is two, one. One on the way. <laughs> one on the way? What, are you buying a car? Mm, not if I can help it. Well, what if I could prove to you that a, a car can be fun to be in and fun to watch? I still wouldn't buy one. Well, I don't want to sell you one. I just, uh, I want you to come to the, the Harris County stock car races with me. Oh, I couldn't do that. Why not? It's two weeks away. Maggie will give you the day off. Let's go ask her. Well, first I'd have to ask Billy Joel if he'd be free to take Billy me. Billy Joe? Well, he's my husband. Oh. Well, I guess I better get back to the kitchen. Excuse me. Okay. Oh, hey. Good luck in your race. Oh, thanks, yeah. Uh, good luck with your new car. Well, with any luck, 
I won't have one. Hey, Ricky, come on over yeah. here. You haven't finished your drink. Listen, I pour it back in the bottle, but the ice cubes have melted. You don't want people saying Maggie Waters or whiskey, do you? Oh. I never go away. We just sit every day, living out the dreams that we've been saving. Stay tuned for the next part of Texas. I do miss some things, yeah. The applause. Sure, that was nice. The way a few dozen kids would appear out of thin air every time you walked through a door. Having strangers come up and shake your hand and call you by your first name. Yeah. Got a little taste of that myself. When you become a headliner on the West Coast, every crazy in L.A. becomes a long-lost friend. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Nobody knows you when you're down and out. You down and out, baby? Not at the moment, no. More like up and in. It's nice to find someone I can talk to. You know, I always heard that only opposites attract. But you can't believe everything you hear now, can you? Not by a long shot. Read to the rescue again. Evening, Terry. <laughs> well, here you are. Almost like clockwork. Actually, I came a little early. Just in case I had to defend my dinner again. Oh, gotcha. This is the dinner hour. That's right. Our time. My time? Oh, I'll have to keep that in mind. When you get off work and right before he starts. Very good. I know a lot more than you think, Terry. For instance, that you work for the infamous Alex Wheeler. Downstairs in the World Oil Office. Now, don't start cutting down Alex. Oh, I never badmouth a man who has more money than I have. That little elevator that you pop in and out of like a jack-in-the-box, is that his too? Private vehicle for private visits? Yeah, that's Wheeler's. Oh, nosy me. Well, speaking of private visits, three's a crowd, right? Have a nice dinner. Oh, Clipper, uh, I'll be rehearsing down in the dining room, just in case you need me. Just in case you need her. Clipper, what okay, is going on? Okay, hold on. Stop here? right there. And don't start in again, Terry. I told you I hired Paige to sing for the dinner show. She's going to be here every night for at least a month. Now, I don't want to hear it every time you bump into her, okay? I'd rather listen to silence than a lot of nagging. And silence is easy to come by, believe me. You know something? You're right. I don't mean to act like that. I just, I don't know. We spend such little time together. I just get insecure, that's all. Well, you work days and I work nights. What are you going to do? What do you say we cheat a little tonight? Go back to my apartment. I'll cook us a nice dinner. Take a long, cool swim by the pool and then. I got an idea. Why don't we, uh, cheat a little tonight?
better than wolfing down something in the office. Any day of the week. Well, that's more like it. Miss Page has really got your goat, hasn't she? Jealousy brings out the best in you. Clipper, don't stop. Well, then, then let's put it this way. You like a good ball player. So-so in practice, but dynamite in competition. You know, I don't really want competition anymore. I had enough of that before your football accident. Clipper, I just want... Look, there's really no reason for us to keep up separate apartments anymore. I can think of one good reason. My neck. You said that brother Max of yours would shoot me if I moved in. Not if... Well... Not if we were married. Well, we're not, are we? No. What's the matter, Terry? Don't you like us the way we are? Of course I do. But you still want to own me. No, I don't want to own you. I want to marry you. There's a big difference. And that's the biggest fairy tale of them all. All right. I'm sorry I even brought it up. Okay, apology accepted. If that's what it was. I guess it was. Look, why don't you lie down and I'll rub you back. Now I gotta get back to the club. I thought you were taking the whole night off. I can't, babe. This is Paige's first show tonight. And I gotta be there. I'll see you later. Will you? Will you come by my place later? Please don't stay for the second show. Hey, enough of the iron grip, all right? Sayonara. Clipper. Don't worry, I'll wake you up, okay? Okay. Come in. Gavin? Oh, come in, Courtney. I was hoping you'd come by your office tonight. I couldn't think of anywhere else to go. I came by to apologize for Bart, for the way he spoiled our afternoon. Oh, no matter. If Bart hadn't, Rena would have as soon as I got home. Is that why you're sitting here in the dark? Must have been bad. Bad? You might even say terminal. What do you mean? Rena, finally done it. I've left Rena. Gavin, you left Rena? That's... I don't know what that is. Are you all right? Numb at the moment. Do you want to talk about what happened? What happened? Tell you what happened. That's what I've been sitting there wondering. Wondering if there was, there was some place, some point I could point to and say, there, there, that's, uh, that's where our marriage went, went off the track. Right there. Uh-uh. The big things don't happen like that. Things build up. Yeah, sure. Or they gradually crumble. Huh? But when the final collapse comes, it's still a shock. And why, in heaven's name, did, did it come to this? Kevin, that's not a hard question to answer for anyone who knows Rena. I've known her since I was a little girl. She used to date my brother, Justin. Even then, people used to say that her father... People said that uh, Rena was used to getting her own way. wants to make the world over to suit herself. Demands more and more attention, more and more excitement. And the more she demanded, the less I felt like giving her. I, uh, I left her once, you know. Uh, <laughs> now that I think of it, that's probably the reason I wanted the cardiac unit in Bay City, just to get out of Rena's clutches. But she followed me. All the rest is history. Miserable and dirty. No. Kevin, I understand that. You had an obligation to try and make this marriage work. 
I know you. You take your commitment seriously. Well, if that's what you think, Courtney, you really don't know me. You say I'm not really that honorable. Kevin, I don't believe a dishonorable thing about you. Don't put me on a pedestal, please. Just let me be human. Of course you're human. I just don't believe you're bad. I needed the money for the cardiac unit. So? Well, it came from Stryker. Does it matter? Look at the good this money's done. When it might only have gone to buying Rena another coat, another yes, house, Yes, yes, I know. Car. I said that to myself for a long time. That it was good for medical science, sure. The fact is, I, I sold a piece of myself to Stryker, which bought Rena a few more months and then a few more months. Kevin, you mean he paid you to stay with him? Well, let's just say he made another contribution to the Keep Arena Happy Fund. One million dollars to set up a cardiac unit. And, of course, to defray the emotional cost of keeping my marriage together. That striker must feel cheated enough. You shouldn't have done it, Kevin. You shouldn't have taken the money oh, under those circumstances. I don't know that now. But I don't think you know why. Because you were the one who was cheated, not Stryker Bellman. Kevin, you're worth a lot more. You're special and wonderful and precious beyond anything I've ever dreamed of. Vicky, I was wrong. I was dead wrong. I walked smack into this with my eyes wide open, though. <laughs> That's the worst part of it. You know, it, it seems that just when I get things straight in my own mind, Rena says, please, and poof, out the window it goes. Don't help things being too hard on yourself. But I can't do right by it. Well, maybe you can, Stryker. Uh -huh. Well, now comes the hard part. Tomorrow, will you go to Rena and tell her you changed your mind about that horse? Well, first thing tomorrow morning. Thank you. I only hope the harm there is can be undone. He's probably told Kevin by now, and Kevin only knows what he'll do. Stay tuned for the conclusion of Texas. Making a mistake. We really shouldn't. Why not? The smartest thing we could both do now is turn our backs on this and walk away. But Kevin, if you're leaving Rena, why should we be afraid? I love you. 
Did I have to tell you that? So young. Old enough to know what I want. Young enough to think I might have it. All right, yes, I'm young. But this isn't an adventure for me. My life's too serious a thing to me, and so is my love. I'm not afraid, Kevin. You are. Yes. Yes, I'm afraid for you. Don't be. All I want is that man that Rena never knew. The one who only wants to be human. Who's placed himself further away than any pedestal could. Show me that man, Kevin. I won't hurt him. I just want him to love me, that's all. Just to love me. got to take off my suit this afternoon. I just put my smock on. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas. Texas, starring Beverly McKenzie. Good morning. Where's Kevin? Rena, where's Kevin? about something. Oh, we quarreled about everything. Especially Bay City. I told him that he could stay there if he wanted to, but that I was staying right here. This is my home. Rena, I know how much you love Houston, but you're married to Kevin. Well, maybe marriage is just one of those things that goes right against my nature. It's Kevin now, honey. Well, just because I'm not Kevin doesn't mean I don't get my hug, does it? Of course <laughs> you do. Uh, come and have some coffee with Iris and me. It completely slipped my mind that you were coming, but I'm so oh, glad to see 
see you. Was it, is it just Iris and you? You mean Kevin isn't in? Nope, but we don't need him. We'll still enjoy our long, nice drive out to the Marshall's Ranch, and you can buy me that. Well, we, uh, and... we uh, are not going to be making that drive today, honey. You're not driving because we're taking the helicopter, right? We are not going, period. Why aren't we going to the Marshall Ranch to buy me that horse, Daddy? Yeah. Now, why not? Because you are not going to be here to ride it, honey. Because you're going back to Bay City with Kevin. I have the strangest feeling that you're trying to tell me what I'm going to do. And if you are... Now, don't start, honey. All I'm doing is telling you the way it's going to be. Well, just why does it have to be this way? Oh, you don't have to tell me. It's some sort of attempt to save my marriage, right? Suppose it is. Well, it's too late. What are you talking about? It is true. Kevin and I had a some big fight last night. Over what? Oh. The important thing, Daddy, is that I ended up telling him that I'm staying in Houston, whether he's staying here or not, because I want to, and I meant it. No, no, no. Now, that... You can chalk up that fight to my account. Oh, Daddy, Yes, that... you can. I should have left things the way they were before you came home this time. I should never have encouraged you. I should never have promised to buy you that... that fool horse. Wait a minute. There's something funny going on here. I see your lips moving, and I hear your voice talking, but those words... Fifty words, aren't they? Now listen. Admit it. Rena, baby, you are wrong. Your mama and I agree on this. There are not many things that I want that I haven't got. But there's one thing I want more than anything. What? I want my daughter to be safe and happy. And to my mind, there's only one way to accomplish that. Oh. Now that is for you to have a safe marriage to a good, strong man. And you have got one in Kevin. He doesn't want me. I told you, he went. He's gone. He, he told me it, it's over. He didn't even come home last night. Now, Daddy, you tell me, what kind of a husband is that? Huh? An angry one. Maybe even a hurting one. What about my hurting? You love him, Rena? Then I will talk to him on one condition. What? That you do your part, too, because it takes two, remember. Why does it have to take two in Bay City? What's wrong with two in Houston? Because two in Houston means that one of them is never really going to make a, a, a break with her daddy and is never really going to become a complete wife to her husband. What? Am I some sort of two-year-old child? You're talking as if I don't know what's good for me. You can't tell me what to do anymore in my life, now, you know. That is where you are wrong, honey. Yes, I can. I just did. Now, Stry look, I am late for an appointment Stryker. in my office. Daddy, now, come on, this isn't fair. Daddy, you said... Daddy, you come back here! I'm sorry, dear, but I, I couldn't help overhearing. Are you all right? I'll be all right in a minute. I'll be just fine. She's not going to get away with this. Who? Vicky, my mother. I know she's behind this little murder. I can see her hand coming at me through him, trying to take control of my life. Well, if she thinks that I don't know who she is, she's got another thing coming. Oh, you've never seen me like this, so angry. <sighs> well, I'm mad! <sighs> what? I am going to stop being mad. 
getting even. You just watch my dust, honey. What are you going to do? You know, those killer German dogs, those uh, Doberman dogs? Well, I'm just going to turn one loose on her, honey. Only he's not a dog and he's not a German. He's Ralph Whalen. Who? Ralph Whalen, the meanest, no holds bar private detective in Houston. Rena, those people can be dangerous. But not to the hand that feeds them, honey. Anyway, I've used them before. Only this time it's going to be different. No Mr. Nice Guy for me. I'm going to tell Ralph, you just dig up any dirty, sneaky thing that Vicky ever did. What makes you think he'll find anything? I'll just tell him to make some noise. Vicky's on the phone? All right, Terry, put her on. Yes, Vicky, how are you? How am I? Relative to what or whom? Oh, I'm sorry, Alex. I guess I'm not just very happy today. I need to see you as soon as possible. Well, I'm sorry, Vicki. It's just been a hectic day of meetings and phone calls. It's just... Someone... Someone has asked me to talk to you on her behalf, and given the circumstances, I couldn't very well refuse. Who? You won't believe it. Iris Carrington. Iris? Iris has asked you to talk to me? What about Vicki? Well, I can't tell you over the phone. You see, I'm just the messenger, and I was asked to deliver this message in person. But I suppose you will just have to wait until you get off your hectic merry-go-round of phone calls and visits. I understand. Well, then, suppose I come over after work. Will that do? Yes, yes, of course. I'll, uh, I'll see you when you can make it. doing this to myself. What is the matter with me? What are you doing? Waiting for Waylon. He said he'd be right over. Really, Rena? To think of turning such anger against Vicky. There's no one more deserving. There is no one less deserving. Shows you how much you know her. I found her to be generous and gracious, even kind. You sure you're talking about Vicky? That's right. You found her gracious, kind, Kind of what? Are you too much of a lady to say it? I really wish you would stop this. Rena, we, we had a long talk, Vicky and I, while you were at the horse show. I, I was terribly grateful to her for all the time she spent with me. I had a lot of questions. About what? About Alex. Well, they've been friends for a long time, but ye gads to ask Vicky for advice? What in the world did you ask her? I told her that Alex had hurt me once, and I asked her to find out for me if you were sincere this time. But well, don't you see? I need it. I still need someone to help me decide if I should stay in Houston or not. And, and she's agreed to help me. Well, maybe she's you. Maybe I'm the only one she hates him, but I don't care. I'm still going to get back at her. That's Waylon now. Well, if you will excuse me. Do you want to stay and see the fun, honey? Frankly, no. Why, hello, Mr. Whalen. What a pleasant surprise. Come on in. Listen, I, uh, I hope we can get someplace this time. I still feel a 
a little guilty about not turning much up for you last time, you know? Well, you tried. Yeah, and failed. Well, you just try harder this time and you can make it all up to me. Oh, just turn me loose. Who's the uh, party in question? Same as last time, my mother, Victoria Bellman. I want her defanged, her claws filed, and if possible, hurting. Oh, that's some order. Sounds to me like maybe you need a lion tamer. Well, we'll just start with you. Now, I want you to go at it all over again, only this time, Mr. Whalen, no holds barred. I mean, you can go anywhere, any place, but you just bring me something I can use. Now, I wonder if there's nothing to find, you know, like last time. No. If uh, you can't dig something up, maybe you could make something up, just this once. Make up something? Mm hmm Yeah. Well, now, like what? Anything juicy. Well, now, uh, any place in particular you'd like me to start? She's going to see Alex Wheeler very soon, maybe even today. So when she goes, you be right behind her taking pictures. And uh, what if there's nothing to take pictures of? Well, I don't know. Uh, a great deal about photography, but uh, maybe you could uh, do some fancy tricks in the dark room, like double exposures. Double exposures? Well, whatever it is that you call them. But Waylon, make up or turn up. Whatever it is, you just bring me something I can use. It'll cost you. Not nearly as much as it'll cost Vicky Lynn. Not nearly as much. Kevin Cook. Oh, Kevin, this is Stryker. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to catch you in the office. Uh, listen, can I drop by and see you today for a little while? Well, Stryker, I, uh... I don't know, I, uh... Look, I, I won't take much of your time, Kevin, but I really do want to have a talk with you. Well, if it's, uh, if it's about Rena, Stryker, no, I really can't. No, no, uh, uh, how about if it's about Rena's father? Was something wrong? Well, you, you know, Bart's been taking care of me ever since I got back from Houston after that spell I had down in Bay City, but... Um, he's never developed a talent for explaining things so the man can understand them. I, uh, I really would like to bring my, my most recent test results over to you, see what you think of them. You want a medical consultation? Yeah, that's right. I'd like some advice. Dr. Oates, 4-4. Four, four. Dr. Oates, 4-4. Four, four. These are Stryker's medical records. He called to tell me to ask you for a consultation today, so thank you. Bart, I hope you don't mind uh, Stryker seeking my opinion. No, I have the deepest respect for your medical judgment and abilities. Thank you. That's nice to hear. Kevin. Yes? I deeply admire the control and discipline you show in the operating room. That is my obligation. Part of my responsibility. But to why my can't you show the same control and sense of responsibility toward the people you come across in your private life? Don't you think you owe them an obligation? It strikes me you're uh, changing the topic. The here. topic is Courtney Marshall. I have to speak for her sake. Then what is it you feel needs to be said? Kevin, since you've come back to Houston, Courtney's changed. I've seen her feelings for you change. 
They started out as hero worship. Now it's afternoons together and kissing. And what next? Bart. I don't want Courtney hurt. Courtney's the last person in the world I would want to hurt. But you will. What makes you so sure? No, Kevin, can you stand there and tell me you don't think a girl like Courtney is going to be hurt by having an affair with a married man? One who's old enough to be her father. I've thought about that. Well, maybe you ought to think about it some more. Think about it more. Thought of a little else all day. Making a mistake. We really should. Why not? Smartest thing we could both do now is turn our backs on this and walk away. But Kevin, if you're leaving Reno, why should we be afraid? I love you. Did I have to tell you that? So young. Old enough to know what I want. Young enough to think I might have it. All right, yes, I'm young. But this isn't an adventure for me. My life's too serious a thing to me, and so is my love. I'm not afraid, Kevin. You are. Yes. Yes, I'm afraid for you. Don't be. All I want is that man that Rena never knew. The one who only wants to be human. Who's placed himself further away than any pedestal could. Show me that man, Kevin. I won't hurt him. I just want him to love me, that's all. Just to love me. Got to take off my suit this afternoon. I just put my smock in. Stay tuned for the next part of Texas. Well, Stryker, your angiogram looks good. Nothing new seems to have developed. Your electrolyte balance looks good. So let's have a look at the x-ray, shall we? I certainly do appreciate your taking time with an old reprobate like me. Oh, you're important to me, Stryker. Besides checking you over again, uh, gives me a chance to take a little pride in my handiwork. Huh? Uh -huh. All right, take off your jacket and shirt, will you please? Oh, yeah. well, not much more pulmonary congestion than before. Huh. Let's listen and see what we can see in here. Huh? Right. <laughs> Sit down there. Yeah. You know, uh, this isn't really necessary. Well, of course it is, Stryker. If I don't hear what's going on inside here, how am I going to verify the test results, huh? Well, I'm... I'm not really worried about the test results. I just use them as an excuse. 
to get to see you. I see. Well, then, what is the real reason you came to see me? Rena. Look, I, I owe you an apology. Well, for what? I, I should never have made her a promise about buying that stupid horse. I, I had no business doing that. I had no business breaking my part of our agreement. It doesn't matter, Stryker. What? You see, Stryker, the, the problem with my marriage to Rena is, is the marriage itself. There's nothing you did, believe me. Rena and I are like milk and vinegar. We, we curdle each other. And that's why, as I'm sure she told you, I'm uh, moving out permanently. It's a pretty unlikely match from the start. A show horse and a work horse yoked together. It will be different this time. Why, Stryker? I haven't changed, neither is Rena. I'm sorry, Stryker. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's all my fault. I brought her up. Kevin, there is no one to blame but me. Be quiet, Stryker. Look, don't, 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 don't tell me no. What she is, hollow, shallow, empty, vain, I made her be that way. Don't look at me like that, Kevin. Stryker, sit down, will you, please? No, 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 look, I know my daughter better than anybody alive. What are you doing? I tell you, I don't need an examination. Please, please just breathe normally, will you? Kevin, if I don't get this out, I'm gonna bust. Stryker, you're not quiet. You're gonna bust. Please, just ease off. Let me listen. I don't have much longer, do I, Kevin? Look, I've never begged anybody for anything, but I'm gonna beg you for something, son. Stay with Rena. Go back to Bay City with her, just for three months. If you do that, I swear to you, I will have Every condition struck out of my will. You won't have to stay with Rena to get all the money you need to support your work. But just give her one more chance. Oh, the hell with this. Look, death comes to every man. I can handle that. But I cannot handle the thought of dying and leaving Rena without your love and support. I'm asking you for three months. Over the scope of a man's life, is that so very long? Over the scope of a man's life. I'll think about it, Strange.
I'm so glad you came. Drink? Please. I seem to be having a hard time getting started. Well, take your time. I thought you'd be half out of your mind waiting to hear what Iris had to say. Well, I am. But I've been waiting for 25 years with only a dream. So, what's a few more hours? Oh, I can't do this. I don't know where to start. Just sum it up for me. All right, then. Iris doesn't trust you. I didn't think that would surprise you too much. That would have to be true, wouldn't it? She wouldn't be human otherwise. What did you tell her, Vicki, about my trustworthiness? I didn't volunteer. Once there was a time, I would have told anyone that you were the most trustworthy man in the world to everyone. Friends and enemies alike. But now... No, no, of course, I... I couldn't expect you to push aside your feelings and vouch for me. Especially to Iris. Vicki, I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh? Oh. You managed to do it very well for someone who wasn't even trying. Vicky. Vicky, don't pull away from me. Well, there's no other direction left for me to go. I certainly can't pull toward you, can I? Vicky, look at me. I can't escape my feelings, my destiny. And my destiny is Iris. I've loved her for so long that that love I have for her has a life of its own, separated from us both. Oh, please, Alex, this is pointless because... Because Iris feels as I do. She feels she can never really trust you, don't you see? Relationships between two people who've been separated for so long I mean, can't just be... I mean, you can't just snap your fingers and expect time and everything that time has done to both of you to just go away. You simply can't. I had no right to think otherwise. Well, Vicky, I guess that means I'm back where I started. What do you mean? I still have my dream. You mean that even if Iris leaves? That's right. I'll still love her forever. Vicki. Thank you for coming by and telling me what Iris said. It was very kind. What I told you, Alex. That's what Iris said. Those were her words, but it didn't matter. My heart was breaking. As she was talking about you with every single word she said. 
I love him so. I've never loved anyone else. My life is nothing. And all the people I've known are just empty frames along the vacant halls of my life. You love her as much as she loves you. As much as I love you. Come in. Abbott? Recording? It's nice to see you. I think you're supposed to smile when you say that, not look glum. I'm sorry. You're not sorry about anything else, though, are you? No. no. Yesterday was the happiest day of my life. And last night. Was the happiest night of mine. And of mine. Why do I get the feeling that something's wrong? Because today is today, and the world is a little bit different than it was last night. But what happened last night, it, it was what we both wanted, wasn't it? Maybe. It was a moment stolen from time, from, from the real world. <laughs> Kevin, what's wrong? Courtney, have you ever left a patient and uh, gone to a movie instead? What? Answer the question. It's important. Well, no, of course not. And I, I never will, either. Why not? Because I'm responsible for them. You don't walk out on a patient who's totally dependent on you. Not even if you want to very, very much. Kevin, we're not talking about patients, are we? We're talking about Rena. We're talking about responsibility and you. Rena isn't sick, she isn't helpless, and she'll be just fine if you leave her. For two or three months. That's all. And she'll fall apart. And no one will ever be able to put her back together. Why? What's going to happen in two or three months? Strike her. Or her father will be dead. Stryker, I just saw him. So did I. Oh. And you talked about it with him? Stryker wants me to stay with Rena until after he's gone. And for, for some time after. How much time? Until Rena grows up. And Stryker's death may, may be a catalyst. I, uh, I have to be there. You are choosing to be there. Only until Rena no longer needs me. But what about me and you? And what ab about the, the little boy that we found together, what we owe him? You'll have to wait for him. So I waited a long time for Rena. He'll die there, wherever he is. Well, I'm sorry. I, I, I can't. I can't live my life based on what the child inside me wants. But you will for the child in Rena. 
funny, don't you understand? If I were free, I'd live my life for us, you and me. Well, I'm just finding that a little hard to believe. Don't you understand? Right I now. have responsibilities, as you do, to your family. My family loves me, Kevin. Does Rena love you? I don't know if she loves me. Then why must you stay with her? I have an obligation to her father. Or is it to his money? Gordon, please, don't make it difficult for me. Will there ever be a time for us? I don't know. But do you want there to be? Yes. I love you, Kevin. Gordon. I love you. I have a duty to bring. But what about the duty that you owe to a love that we shared? I'm sorry about that argument we had last night. It doesn't night. matter. I just want to be alone. So it's clean. No. I'd never let you alone when you're all upset like this. I wouldn't do it to a patient of mine, and I won't do it to you. But please. Court. Something's wrong, so tell me about it. I don't want to. You always used to. I can't now. Well, I saw where you were running from. So maybe you don't really need to tell me anything at all. Stay tuned for the conclusion of Texas. that renowned Dr. Kevin Cook. Now you see him, now you don't. Or did he just come home to pick up his things? No. No, I came home because I want our marriage to work, if that's possible. I, uh, I saw a striker today. Oh, how nice. What did Daddy have to say? Both he and Vicky agree we stand our best chance of surviving together back in Bay City. That's what Vicky thinks. That's what I think, too. That's not what I think, darling. I'm aware of that. Kevin? Yes? Do you think that we would be better off in Bay City because that's what you think? Or because that's what you think Vicky and Stryker want? What difference does it make? Hmm? What if they should change their mind? They won't, Rena. Oh, I don't know. They just might, Kevin. What I want to know is, if they change their minds, will you change your mind about making our marriage work? Do you think it still could work in Houston? Would you still try? Yes, Rena. I'd still try. Now, if you'll excuse me. Good night, Kevin. Come on, Ralph Whalen. Come up with something good. I'm halfway home. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas.
Texas, starring Beverly McKenzie. I'm sorry to disturb you at such an early hour. Well, I am usually better after I've had my first cup of coffee. Would you like a cup? Oh, no, thanks. I've had coffee and breakfast over an hour ago. Working women do have to keep a schedule, you know. But I wanted to report to you on my talk with Alex. Then you've seen him? Yes, I've seen him. Oh, what did he say? Is it, um, well, how did he seem to you? How did he seem? Well, like another person. He's not like the Alex I knew at all. Vicky, please, what did he, what did he say about me? How does he really feel? Well, if you mean, was he telling you the truth? The answer is yes. He's spent the last 25 years building an empire for you. Somehow, I never doubted that. Well, if you never doubted it, then... Oh, well, I what? asked you to talk to Alex because I... I don't know if he made his world for me or for a dream of me. Don't you see, Vicky? How can I measure up to this... this ideal Alex has spent so long creating? How could any woman? There's so much he doesn't know about me. Well, then I suggest you tell him all about yourself. You have nothing to hide. Oh, really, Iris, I can't discuss this any further. I have to be getting to work. Thank you, Vicky. I just can't tell you how very much this has meant to me. I think nothing of it. I was glad to find out. Goodbye, Iris. Goodbye. And thank you again. Miss Decker, uh, this is Iris Carrington. Is Alex free? Uh, one moment, please. It's her. It's Iris Carrington. Iris, this is Alex. Alex, I, I want to talk to you, but, but not on the phone. May I come see you? Of course. Something just came up to cause me to cancel my whole morning schedule. Alex, are you sure? Yes, darling. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. Did I say something wrong? You want me to uh, go out and come back in again? She's in there. Who's in there? Why are you whispering? And the way you're acting must be the Queen of England. Or? Iris Carrington. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I'll be. And she came to see Alex. Isn't it romantic? <laughs> I'm so excited, I just typed a letter with the carbons reversed. Believe me, I doubt it to leave a notice. He'll probably sign both sides. <laughs> This morning, I'll bet he would. You know, I'm not too observant today myself. I just noticed. Well, not to get to shave? Ah, uh, you mean this, huh? Yeah, I mean that gorgeous Stetson. Yeah, well, uh, Stryker Bellman gave it to me. Took me to the horse show, too. Guess he was trying to sell me on uh, staying here in Texas, right? Did he make a sale on Texas? Well, he made an interesting offer. A position in his law firm. And I may just buy. I hope you do. But uh, if you wanted to consult Alex on it, you may have to wait. The first time in my memory, Alex Wheeler has let business go. Something far more important. Nope, that's all right. I don't mind waiting. Well, excuse me then. 
I better retype this letter. I'll have some tall explaining to do. Iris or no Iris? Right, uh, I'll wait over here. Now, now, there's the, there's the crowd pleaser of the Marshall family. She's a fine rider, a trainer, a breeder. What that girl can't do with a horse just doesn't get done. <laughs> you all seem to have all the fun. Oh, Rena, you're the one that's always on the go. And that's not where the fun is, either. I miss riding, and I miss the shows, and I miss jumping, too. Well, nobody should have to do without all that. Here, why don't you take Lady Grey around for a few jumps? Oh! <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. that. Now that's some kind of a girl, huh? Yes, Jack. Some kind of a girl. I'm sorry, Ryan. Uh, Alex may be with Iris for uh, some time. That's okay, Terry. I don't mind waiting. Not now. When Vicky came by to tell me you felt you couldn't trust me, at first I thought I'd lost you, my darling, but now... I... Alex, please, don't make too much of this too soon. How does the poem go? Had we but world enough and time. This coyness, lady, were no crime. Please believe me, Alex, I'm not being coy. I'm just being cautious. Cautious? After all these years, how can I blame you? But you did say you were staying in Houston. I said I'm thinking about staying here. Please, don't rush me. <sighs> of course, uh, I'll try not to, but what can I do to help you make up your mind? Nothing. I mean, everything. Oh, Alex, what I think I mean is just, just stand by me, but don't... Crowd you? Yes, yes. It's, it's not simple. I can't stay on as Rena's guest forever. I'll have to find an apartment here. An apartment? What about a house? A house? Oh, a house sounds so permanent. I don't think I'm ready for that, not yet. Of course, perhaps. I'll, ha I'll have to give up my lovely place in Bay City. But then it seems so cold and empty now. And then there are my bank accounts and, and my holdings, and I'm terrible at that sort of thing. Let me handle it for you. I'll get in touch with your lawyer when... <laughs> What is it, Iris? Uh, uh, something wrong? No, nothing is wrong. It's just that my lawyer is also my ex-husband. Brian Bancroft. Yes. Perhaps I should have said my almost ex-husband. We've agreed to divorce, but the papers aren't final yet. That, that's something else that has to be finished. Would you like me to call him? I can handle all this for you. Oh, no. Thank you, Alex. I, I wouldn't do that to Brian. I owe him at least that much. Well, whatever you think is right. My goodness, I, I've taken up an awful lot of your time. I know how busy you must be with appointments and conferences. There's only one appointment I'm interested in. That's when I made 25 years ago. Really, I should go. Not before you tell me when you'll see me again. I could take the rest of the afternoon off. We could go sailing in my yacht. No, no. Then how about dinner? Tonight. I'd love to. I have to see Dennis first, after he finishes work. Oh? I have to tell him I'm thinking about staying in Houston. He may not like the idea. Why not? He'd love to have you stay. 
If he feels crowded, it's a, a big city, and uh, uh, surely he, uh, he won't object. Well, I don't know if he will or not. But what my son thinks is very important to me, Alex. If it's important to you, it's important to me. Thank you. I'll call you after I talk to Dennis. Not until he says he'd love to have you stay. You promise? Yes, I promise. <sighs> Remember, call me just as soon as you talk to Dennis. I won't get any work done until you do. I will, Dennis. <laughs> what are you two grinning at? Who, us? Nothing, boss. Well, Ryan, I'm sure he didn't come in here to gawk at your uncle. How was the horse show? Did Stryker open your eyes? Anything new? He, uh, he sure did. Well, I, I hope it included a job offer. Well, uh, I can't wear this in tank here, can I? Now Stryker will just give me a place to hang and I'll be in business. <laughs> Great. Terry, get Stryker on the phone. Have him join us. I want you to come in here and tell me what changed your mind about staying in Texas, huh? All right. Mr. Bellman, please. Well, it's gotten pretty lonely up here, Alex. Yes. Sometimes I felt like I wasn't living 50 floors above other people. I was living 50 floors away from them. But not now, right? No. Now I'm just like everybody else walking around down there, living and loving. Well, it gets pretty rough down in the streets and dirty. Yeah, but I'm ready for it, Ryan. No matter how rough it gets, it's better than living in a gold-plated palace with nothing but empty rooms. Well, come on. Sit down. Tell me why you decided to stay. Well, two reasons, really. Reason number one. You're not satisfied with the investigation on the Sheik's death. I'm disgusted with it. Spent most of yesterday reviewing the case with the authorities. And? And we went over every bit of evidence they've dredged up. Now, the feds are convinced the orderly was involved, all right. The one they found floating in the ship's channel? Yeah. But that's where the whole thing ends. Somebody paid the orderly to switch pacemakers, but they don't have any leads as to who it was. Their best guess is that somebody from Tankir just flew in and flew out. But you're sure they're wrong? I'm not sure of anything in this mess. Call it a hunch, I don't know. I just, I just feel I can learn a lot more here in Houston than I could in Tank here. Well, that takes care of reason number one. What about number two? That's personal. Personal? Mm-hmm. Suddenly you're uh, all closed mouthed. Uh, what's the matter? Is she married? Well, I don't know yet. But I'm sure you're going to find out. Good. <laughs> and if she isn't, you can bet I'm not going to hop on the next freight or a train out of town and leave her waiting for, what was it, 25 years? <laughs> well, you can learn a lot from your elders, even if it is from their mistakes. Alex, you sent for me? Stryker. Hmm. Ryan has decided to accept our offer. Oh. He'll be joining your firm in world oil business. That is hmm. terrific. Oh, Thanks. welcome aboard. It's great to have you. You grab that hat, and I'll take you down to the tenth floor, and I'll show you a, a desk and a secretary and um, some work. Already? You knew there was a catch now, didn't you? I'll get you the file on the Marshall Oil bankruptcy claims. That'll be your first order of business. Well, show me the way. Right. Right, here. Uh, about those claims, uh, will Mike's house in River Oaks be sold as a part of the proceeding? I'm afraid so, Alex. Just about everything Mike had has to go. Make an offer on it for me, will you? The house? Yes, make it a good offer. Good enough to help the family out. Well, sure, Alex, but uh, do you need a house? You got to. What, an, an empty palace? Yes, that's what I've got. 
What I need is a house, a home. At least I hope that's what it'll be. I'll do my best. Okay. Goodbye. And come along, boy. So long. See you later, Alex. Yeah. Mr. Whalen, Beth said you insisted on seeing me. Now, what's so important that you have to come this time of the morning? Uh, something uh, you've been wanting for a long time, Mrs. Cook. Let's see what you've got. Now, uh, I went to a lot of trouble to get these, and not a little risk. Why is it that I'm feeling this funny sensation all the way down in my pocketbook? Maybe you're just picking up my thought waves. You know, I make my living by pictures. I can't just tack them on the walls and admire them. So you want a little extra? Yeah, I'd say uh, double my usual fee. That's a mite greedy, isn't it? No, no. Uh, you know, I, I think it's about just about right for these. After all, I, uh, I put myself on the line to get these, Mrs. Cook. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I tailed Mrs. Bellman, like you suggested. <laughs> she went straight to the Wheeler World Building, all right. And, uh, when she got to the garage, and when she got into his Private elevator. Now, look at this. Her own key. Oh, Mommy. You're really blue at this time. And uh, here they are, together on our screen at last. You're very good, Mr. Whalen. You know, I can, I can see how you faked the first one, but this, this shot of Vicky and Alex really looks like it's been taken inside of the world building. Now, how did you do that? Uh, Mrs. Cook, these are not fakes. Oh, come on. You're kidding, aren't you? No way. Now, that's what I've been trying to tell you. I used a skeleton key to get into Wheeler's private elevator. Now, I want to tell you, I was sweating blood when I got out on his floor. Now, I was, I, was, I was very lucky they were so lost in conversation that they didn't see me. Wheeler would have had my license in an instant if he'd caught me, not to mention what would have happened to my hide. <laughs> so, she really does have a key. That looks bad. They're not bad enough. They are old friends, and she could have always said that he gave her a key out of friendship. Yeah, pretty close friends, eh? <laughs> you know, they're getting to know each other better and better. Maybe he said, uh, not tonight, baby, I've got a headache. Uh, you think that? <laughs> I think you did old Victoria in, Mr. Whalen, and you did it fair and square. Oh, well, now, you know what they say, Mrs. Cook, honesty is the best policy. Well, I think virtue should be rewarded, don't you? Mm -hmm. I'll double the amount we agreed to. It'll be in the mail tomorrow. Thank you, Mrs. Cook. Thank you, Mr. Whalen. Oh, uh, good morning, Mrs. Cook. Victoria Bellman, please, it's your daughter speaking. Yes. Vicky, honey! 
Yes, Rena, what is it? Oh, nothing in particular. Uh, I just thought we haven't seen each other for some time, and a little birdie tells me that we have something to discuss. Rena, if this is about Stryker buying you that horse, there's no way in the world. Now, Mommy, let's not argue over the phone. You know we do that a whole lot better face to face. Besides, there are more things to talk about in this world than horses. There's a horse trade. Rena, what have you got up your sleeve? If you want to know that, you'll just have to take a look. All right, I'll come by your house after work. Oh, that, uh, that may get a little involved. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's meet on neutral territory. How about Top of the World Club for lunch? Should I ask Stryker to join us? No, I think we'll leave Daddy out of this for now. All right, Rena, if you think all of this is necessary, the Top of the World Club at noon. Bye-bye. See you there. Rena. On my way in, I passed that unpleasant private detective you hired. He hasn't really turned up anything on your mother, has he? You'd be surprised, honey. Very surprised. It's a shocker. You're not going to use it, are you? Discreetly, Iris. I wouldn't want this getting all over town. Rena. Don't do this. Please. Your mother's been so kind to me. Has she? Well, don't you worry, honey. I won't push her too hard. At least think about it. Oh, I will, all the way to lunch. Now, if you'll excuse me, if I'm going to play King of the Mountain with dear Victoria, I'll have to get dressed to kill. Rena. Rena. And now, the next part of Texas. to do me a favor, okay. and be sure and call us and tell us all about your adventures when you get to Houston. Yeah, well, there better not be too many adventures. You'll be back on this ranch for the rest of the summer. Max, I'm going to be so busy working for Aunt Maggie that I'm not going to have any time to go looking for any trouble. Oh, uh -huh. that's another thing. All I have to hear is that you haven't been working hard enough to pay for your keep. And I'm back on the ranch, right? That's right. I know, I know. Any other advice, big brother? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, there is. Don't go walking around at night on the streets by yourself. And don't go keeping bad company. And I don't, I don't want to hear you. don't go robbing any banks. And don't forget to brush my teeth, right? Any other don'ts? Just one. Don't forget we love you. <laughs> that goes double for me, honey. Hey. Well, I guess I better get going. Hey, where's Ricky? He's under that pile of junk. He calls a car. Where else would he be? Hey, Ricky, come on out of there. I must drive a laner to Maggie's. Hey, I can't do it. If I don't get this front end fixed, I won't uh, be able to race. Ricky, you promised. All you ever think about is your stupid old stock car races. Come on, Elena. The Harris County stock car race is the biggest thing to hit this neck of the woods for the whole year. Oh, baloney. Ricky, you slide on out of there. I'm going to fix your front end. Ricky, Justin's up at the house not doing much of anything. I'm sure he'd like to finish up here. He'd enjoy working on a stock car again, that's for sure. That way you can drive Elena to Houston, and you still have your car ready for the race. Wow, you really think you'd do it? Oh, sure. Well, I don't know what I'm doing you any favors for. Well, I guess we're on our way. <laughs> hey, I'll speak. 
speak to you from the big city, okay? Oh. I hope Ricky's in a hurry to get there because I cannot wait. You behave now, you. I will, I promise. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, you are a real peacemaker, Jay. I was about to crack heads there. I can't risk any more cracked heads every time Ricky goes into a race with his ass. I certainly don't need it at home. You're right. Hey, you want to go for a ride? I'll saddle up Lady Grey. Yeah, I'd like that. Lady Grey could use some exercising, and I could use a nice long run. Okay. Lorena, I'm glad to see you looking so cheerful. I must admit I was half expecting a tirade. In front of all of your business associates? No, Vicky, they won't see any hysterics today. Not for me, anyway. Then you are going to be reasonable about Stryker's decision not to buy you that horse? I want us to both be reasonable, Vicky. Now, I know that you've had Daddy change his mind about everything, so I'm going to convince you to change his mind back again. You know you'll never do that. I think I will. Now, Rena, please, you promised me you wouldn't get upset. And I told you that I wouldn't be the one most likely to get upset. Waiter, would you bring my mother a drink, please? Vodka martini. That's right, isn't it? Uh, Rena, why don't you let me decide if I want a drink or not? Well, I was just trying to be helpful, honey. I thought you might be needing one. What's that supposed to mean? I thought it might help cushion the blow a little, that's all. Rena, what are you up to? What blow? In seeing these, honey. Here you go, ma'am. One vodka martini. Thank you. Where did you get these? I hired a private detective to follow you. It's amazing what those guys can turn up with the most respectable businesswoman. Yesterday? You weren't very cautious. I had no reason to be. You didn't? Oh. Rena, everyone knows that Alex and I have been friends for years. And you know very well that I went to see him yesterday because Iris asked me to. Well, I sure know now that she made a mistake in asking you. I'll just bet you were thinking about Iris in this. It's not what it looks like. Oh, I think it's exactly what it looks like. If you're just friends, why do you have a key to Alex Wheeler's private elevator? And why do you go to a suite when his offices are right next door? And how do you explain this? Rena, Or this? He's thrown you over, hasn't he? for Iris, the one true love in his life. You know, I really hate to bring all of this up when Alex has just dumped you. Rena, please. 
You're not going to deny that you were lovers, are you? I didn't think so. No. But not when Stryker and I were together. But you left him for Alex Wheeler. I wanted to be fair to your father. So you lied? You, you told everyone it was because of your career? You didn't have enough time for Daddy or me? Rena, when I left Stryker, he begged me not to take you two. And I, I loved him too much. I didn't want to hurt him anymore. Oh, how can you say you loved him when you left him for Alex? I guess you'll never understand. I sure won't. I don't think you ever loved Daddy or me. I can hardly believe that grand passion you have for Alex. <laughs> You're made of ice, lady. I don't think you've ever loved anyone. Waiter, another vodka martini, please. Sure thing. Can I get anything for you? No, thank you. I'm just fine. Well, all right. Uh, how about... Uh, I send the waiter over here with the menu, and you could order dinner then. Why don't you give us a few minutes? I don't think we're ready to look at the menu yet. I don't think we'll be having lunch. It seems my mother has lost her appetite. All right, Rena, you've had your little victory. You've managed to publicly humiliate me. <laughs> and here, even I thought you wouldn't create a scene in such a popular if you're satisfied. No, I'm not. Sit down. You haven't heard the terms on what it will take to keep me silent. Now, you are going to go to Stryker's office and tell him that you've changed your mind about me staying in Houston. I haven't changed my mind. Oh, yes, you will. And, in fact, you're going to tell him that it's good for his health to have someone around who really loves him, since I have proof that you don't. Rena, I honestly am not competing with you for Stryker's love, and I, I want you to go back to Bay City for your own I'll good. I'll decide what's for my own good, and it's not being alone in a little apartment in another town. I'm staying in Houston. Now, you just tell Stryker exactly what I said. I'm going to show him you his mother. All right. I'll go to your father's office right now. I thought you would see it my way. No. I'm going to tell him everything. You wouldn't. I would. You may think you always get your way. But you can't blackmail me. I sure am impressed with my new office, Stryker. My entire staff and tank here didn't have that much space. Well, I'll tell you, son, we don't have a bigger account than World Oil. And I figure when you start getting your work into that office, it's going to seem pretty small pretty soon. Well, then I better get started right away. I've been looking over these Marshall Oil files. Didn't realize it was that bad. Yeah. They're in pretty bad shape. I tell you, that family's going to have to scrape up every nickel they can get. Since Alex wants to make an offer on Mike's River Oaks house, I think that's where you ought to start. Right, now, who do I see about the house? Well, the person to talk to would be Kate Marshall. That's Mike's mother. Okay. You'll find her down on the Marshall Ranch, about uh, 30 miles out of town. And which one of Houston's innumerable freeways do I take to get there? None. You just go up to the roof of the World Building and hop into Alex's helicopter. Hey, hey. Yeah, I talked with Terry and made sure that it was ready and waiting for you. Oh, and by the way, on your way down there, you can do a little sightseeing. You can see uh, downtown Houston and the, oh, the Ship Channel. Now, that's something you don't want to miss. And the uh, San Jacinto Monument. Um, incidentally, the pilot of the helicopter knows the way to the, well, where Kate is. He's flown Alex and Terry down there for Mike's funeral. 
Oh, I better get going. Mm. Uh, Ryan, when you're talking to Kate, don't tell her that the offer comes from Alex. Say it comes from me. Why? Well, the Marshall family is uh, old Texas. They can be as cussed and hard-headed as Sam Houston or William Barrett well, well, Travis well, or any of those What's old boys. What's that got to do with selling a house to Alex? Oh, a lot. You know, I was down there at the funeral and there were some hard words between Alex and Justin Marshall. What about? About Mike's death. I told you that uh, some of the Marshall people, uh, especially Justin and Dawn, blame Alex for, for driving Mike to suicide. That's crazy. I know it is, I know. I don't think Kate takes too much stock in this, but you're gonna have to get all of the Marshall signatures if you wanna sell any of Mike's property. So leave Alex out of it, right? That's right, son. I know it's an uncomfortable spot to be in, but like I told you, Justin and Dawn, if they get wind of the fact that Alex is in on this, they are gonna close ranks on you. And no matter if they get a lesser offer from somewhere else, they're gonna take it. Okay, Striker, I'll see what I can do. I tell you, it's for their own good now. They need all the money they can get. And it makes no difference in the world where it comes from. Striker, oh, hello, Ryan. I'm sorry, dear, I didn't realize you were busy. Oh, well, that's all right, Vicki. Uh, I was just leaving, Striker. You have a good trip now, son, and you, uh, say hello to Kate Marshall from Vicki and me, huh? I will. All right. Well, this is a nice surprise. You got a light day at the office, you come by and have lunch with me. No, I came to talk to you, Striker. Well, we can talk and eat at the same time. I'll take you up to the roof, and you can tell me all about it. Uh, but, Striker, no, no, I... Now, look. Don't argue with a hungry man. But come I... on, come on. Stay tuned for the conclusion of Texas. This is Marshall. Kate Marshall? That's right. My name's Ryan Connor. I'm with Stryker Bellman's law firm. Nice to meet you. I knew Stryker when he was lieutenant governor. Mr. Bellman asked me to come out here to see you. Yeah. Do you always go everywhere in one of those? I beg your pardon? That thing. A helicopter? Huh. No, it's uh, just a lot faster than driving out here. Oh. People in Houston use those things to get around now? You mean to work, go home? Uh-huh. No, uh, <laughs> businessmen use them when they're in a hurry. Oh. Well, you're always in a hurry, aren't you? I guess that's so. <laughs> Well, I sure hope they don't start bringing people out here from the city and those things. But then I guess you didn't come out here to tell me one. What can I do for you? Well, Mr. Bellman asked me to come out here to see if you'd be interested in selling the Marshall home. 
He said he knew that, uh... Well, the place? Well, yes, yeah, Stryker said he knew you and your family were having, uh, some financial trouble. That's all right. <laughs> we had trouble in the late 30s, when the land turned to dust and the cattle died. And we had trouble in the early 30s when the banks failed. <laughs> yes, but now with Mr. Marshall gone... Uh... Yeah, and then... Young man, we've had trouble since 1836. When the Mexican army marched right through here and stole all the cattle. But this place was never for sale. And it's not for sale now. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean the ranch. I, I meant the house in town. You said the Marshall home. This is it. You're standing on it. That house in town, that was just Michael's hotel for a few years. I'll be glad to see it gone. It's nothing but bad memories. He wasted a lot of his life in there. Then perhaps I could describe the offer Stryker's ready to make. Young man, I'm not going to worry myself at what happens to that house. You're going to have to ask Ginny. Ginny? Here she comes now. Let's go to the stable and meet her. Are you coming, Mr. Connor? Oh, sure. Sure. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas. Texas.